Good morning and welcome to the service for the difference. Um, it is the 26th of May 2024 and we stand at the beginning of the season of discipleship. We have just come to the end of the season of Easter and as we go on this journey of discipleship we, we begin this journey with with Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is is the first Sunday of the season of of discipleship and today we are looking at um, how the Trinity invites us to be a part of the dance of life, um, invites us to be a part of the dance of, of creation. And today we, we are reading from Psalm 29, just where the psalmist recognizes that the power over creation resides in God's voice. When God speaks, creation responds. And, and if God is more powerful than all of creation, then then you and I, we should be able to find our peace in, in God. And we're also going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 8. Um, God calls Isaiah into the ministry. He says, I, I need you to be a prophet. I need you to take my word to the people and I will purify your words. I'll pur purify your mouth so that when you speak, you speak the things I give you to, to speak. And we're also going to be reading from Romans chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 12 to verse 17, where Paul speaking to the people of Rome says, you are no longer slaves to your own natural desires, to the flesh. You are no longer slaves to the spirit of fear, but you are you are children of God. You have you received the, the spirit of adoption, the spirit that convicts us that we are sons and daughters of, of God. We have received the, the Holy Spirit that takes us on to onto a holy living and onto an intimate relationship with with God. By that spirit, we are able to know that we have an intimate relationship with, with God. And then we're going to be reading from John chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 17. Um, Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus. Nicodemus has come to ask him a question because he sees in Jesus something that he knows is from God. He just he needs to investigate it. He asks Jesus and they speak about being born again. And Nicodemus obviously doesn't quite get what that means for him. Again, I'm going to ask that you put this on, on pause as you first read through those readings. And as we read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. Imagine if the world could be reborn. In, in kind of the same way Nicodemus is imagining in his conversation with Jesus. And I'm, I'm sure that most people think that our entire society, our communities, our, our world, in fact, could do with a do-over. You know, where we, where we start again and we try and do it differently this time. A, a brand new start where, where evil is taken out of the picture. You know, a world where there are no, no drugs, no guns, no, no gangs, no, no politicians, no violence, no one yielding power over anyone else, no no greed, no need to amass and hoard a wealth of resources while other people are going hungry. Um, I think we, we all think we could live quite happily in a world in which we care for each other, a world in which we care for, for creation, kind of, kind of like the world that the hermits of old try to create for themselves, but a world that is, that is lived out in, in community with everyone, a world where, where all of us are are just trying to do our best at caring for ourselves, at caring for for the people around us, at caring for all that God has given us to, to care for. And I want to say this morning, the work of the Trinity is to restore this world to a world that has the opportunity to be a, a do-over world. You know, one of the things though, that gets in the work of the Trinity, obviously, Paul says it so beautifully, he says, it's, it's our slavery to, to fear. We, we, we prevent that world from becoming a reality because we are slaves to, to fear. And, and, and when he speaks to the Romans, he is saying, as believers, we, we are no longer indebted to the flesh. We, we don't owe our selfish nature anything. Not having control over our desires is, is what brings death. If we've got no self-control, then we are, being, we are being led by the spirit of slavery to fear. You know, we're afraid that we are going to lose too much because of how much we have already invested in 
in the brokenness that, that surrounds us. And as examples of that, we, we struggle with justice and, and equality when we are slaves to comfort. We're afraid that we are going to lose our comfort, and so our fear keeps us there. We struggle with peace and compassion when we are slaves to power. We're afraid that, that we're going to lose our significance, that we are going to disappear into, into being nothing. And so our fear keeps us chasing after after power. We suffer because the spirit of God is in conflict with the spirit of slavery to fear. The, the, the kingdom of God is, is in conflict to, to the world. They're opposed. They've got different agendas. They've got different ideals. They've got different interests. They've got, they've got different, different principles. And, and fighting against the enemy is, is one thing, but, but fighting within ourselves is another thing altogether. And we, we, the fight we have within ourselves is because we're afraid that we're going to have to enter into the unknown. We're afraid that we are going to have to give up something that that we value. And, and that's a fight that you and I often, often lose. We know what's right, but we can't follow through with it because it's just it's just asking too much of us. We're afraid that we're going to lose too much if we go on the journey of being made holy as as God is is holy. We have invested too much in the brokenness that surrounds us for us to to want to embrace the things of God that says let go of of the brokenness. And so Paul says to the believers in Rome, he says, you are, you are no longer indebted to the flesh, but you are indebted to the spirit of life because the spirit of life gives you life. It helps us put to death the uncontrollable desires of, of the body. This is the spirit that convicts us that we are loved by God and, and that God invites us to love him intimately enough to be able to call him ever father. Father, my my father, and and we we can call him ever father because we are his children. The Spirit convicts us of all that we have in God. The Spirit convicts us of all that we are in God. The Spirit convicts us that we are heirs of all that that is God's. We are heirs, but we also need God to help us fully inherit everything that is ours. We need we need God's help to to live fully as a part of the kingdom in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Because the kingdom is God's kingdom, and, and that's our inheritance. Imagine, imagine a life where you are able to live freely, a life, a life where we are free to show mercy to, to each other without fear of losing anything. Because this, this is our inheritance. Our, our inheritance is a world without gangs. It's a world without guns, without violence, without untimely death. It's a world where, where children are filled with the joy of God because they are deeply, madly in love with with God and the work of the Trinity is to draw us into this kind of a world and and with our help to draw the world into into this kind of a world this world the kingdom of God does exist and we're a part of it but maybe maybe you and I have got one foot in the kingdom of God and one foot in this world and that's why the brokenness exists because we haven't emigrated fully into the kingdom of God yet and so the work of the Trinity is is to help us immigrate into the kingdom of God. The work of the Trinity is to, is to help us live this life that in Christ has become possible. Nicodemus again asks the question of Jesus. He says, how is it possible that we can be born again? And the fact is that we, we have been born again. And it is almost the same as if we had been born from the womb of our mother. Because we are being born from the womb of of darkness and we are brought into the glorious light of the glory of of God we're we're born again with the help of the father the son and the holy spirit the father's idea is that we will that we will live in in this fullness that is a part of him and and the son loves this idea and so makes it possible by giving himself fully to this end and the Holy Spirit helps us into this fullness by convicting us of sin and of righteousness and of of judgment by by guiding us, by drawing us into sanctification, by convicting us that we are we are more to God than we are to ourselves, and and by calling us to to love others, which is what you and I were, were created to to do, and so the whole Trinity is involving us in in inheriting what is ours in God. The whole the whole Trinity is at work in in teaching us this this dance of of life they are drawing us into into life and life in all its all its fullness a couple of years ago richard richard raw speaking of of the trinity says that um he was referring to a three three-legged 
um, fidget spinner, if you remember the, the fidget spinners, he says each arm of the fidget spinner is like one member of the Trinity. The arms are not the same. They, they are separate from each other, but they are a part of the same spinner. And, and also, the Trinity is, is dynamic. God is always moving. is never static. And so, and so the, the fidget spinner best helps to explain the Trinity when it is, when it is moving. Um, because when, when, when the spinner is moving, you can't tell one part from, from the other because they're all the same su substance and they're, and they're all helping each other to, to do the same thing. They're all helping each other to, to stay in, in balance. And, and it's almost as if he says they are, they're dancing. And, and this dance that they are doing is called the dance of life. And I, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody dance so beautifully that even though you don't know the technicalities of the dance, you just you you want to instinctively join the dance. I don't know if you've seen anybody ice skate. It's the same thing. They're just doing it so beautifully. You just you want to you want to get on the, on the on the ice and skate as as they are doing, even though you don't know how to how to skate. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard anybody sing so beautifully that you just you instinctively want to join in with a song, even though you you don't know the words or well, you don't even know how to how to sing. You you just want to join in the dance. You want to join in the song because it's an expression of of love and and it connects with your heart in such a way that your heart just wants to be just wants to be a part of it. What you see and what you hear in front of you just connects with you in a way that inspires and encourages and makes you want to live your life differently. Makes you want to live your life more fruitfully. Makes you want to live your life with 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 passion. And so the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they, they are moving in unison and they are dancing the dance of life. They are dancing the dance of salvation perfectly and they are dancing it beautifully. You know, they are majestically drawing us into this dance so that we can know the pleasure and the joy and the privilege and, and the wonder of, of being a part of, of this dance. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are, are moving in, in perfect harmony and they are moving as if they are dancing with the same feet and they, and they understand each other perfectly and they know exactly where the other one is going. And the reason they know exactly where the other one is going is because they all have the same purpose and their purpose is to make us one with them. Uh, their purpose is to make us one with each other. And that's Jesus' prayer in, in John chapter 17. Lord God, may they be one. As you and and I are, are, are one, may they love each other with the same love that that you love me with. And so, this dance of life is God's complete expression of of love for us. It's 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 His complete expression of love for all of creation, and and it draws us into the harmony of of His kingdom. This dance is our inheritance. This is the gift that we are given by the Trinity, and and along with us, it is the gift that the Trinity gives gives to the world and and when i'm drawn into the dance of life by the father by the son by the holy spirit i am born into a new reality and i'm able to grow and mature in that reality as I, as long as i remain obviously in in the dance and and by that very act i'm able to draw others to instinctively take the hand of the hand of the one who is inviting them to join them in this dance do you want to dance the dance of life with God. Pray with me. Lord God, your, your invitation to us to join you in this dance of life, this dance of wonder and of beauty and of grace is, is an invitation that is beyond us because we are still asking who we are that you should be so mindful of us. Who, who are we that you should consider us as being worthy of, of this invitation? Thank you, Lord God, that we can know the answer to this question is that we are your children and, and you are our father. Your love is without limits because you are without limits. And so we thank you for this invitation, Lord. And, and we ask, please give us the courage to take your hand and to, and to dance as you teach us the steps. You dance this dance because, because we don't know the steps. We can't save ourselves. And so it is your pleasure and your joy to save us. Help us to allow you to teach us to do it better, one step at a time. Help us to connect with you in a way that we will keep your time as we learn the steps of this dance from you. Hear us, Lord God, as we pray this prayer in your precious, precious name. Amen.